Welcome back to Campus Countdown. My name is Emily Sturge and today we'll be discussing a professor at NYU says Gen Z is too fragile, causing a national crisis. Hillary Clinton is now a presidential fellow at Columbia University and over in California, university job applicants are required to fill out statements of their contributions to diversity on their job applications. We will be covering these three stories and more on today's episode of Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, an NYU professor argues Gen Z is too fragile, causing a national crisis. Jonathan Haidt, a social psychologist at New York University, argued that members of Gen Z are experiencing a profound mental health crisis due to a number of factors. These factors include social media, bad parenting, and a political ideology that emphasizes victimhood. The professor argued that when you look at Americans born after 1995, you see extraordinarily high rates of anxiety, depression, self-harm, and even suicide. Haidt attributes this to the combination of social media and a culture that emphasizes victimhood. Haidt also emphasizes this to an overly restrictive parenting style that has made many Gen Zers fragile, making them unable to cope effectively with the normal stresses and challenges of adulthood. For example, the age at which children were allowed outside on their own by parents has risen from the norm of previous generations, 7 or 8, to now between 10 or 12. Haidt has long studied issues at the intersection of political ideology, mental health, and social dynamics. He argues that the only solution to these issues is to parent and to educate with an emphasis on resilience and intellectual openness. In our second story this week, Hillary Clinton is now a presidential fellow at Columbia University. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent Sarah Prentice. Columbia University recently announced that former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton will join its faculty. Clinton will serve as Professor of Practice at the School of International and Public Affairs and as a Presidential Fellow at Columbia World Projects. In her two roles at the university, Clinton will focus on global policy and uniting policy experts. Columbia's announcement says Clinton will engage with students in the classroom starting in the 2023 to 2024 academic year, with her appointment to begin in February of 2023. Columbia World Projects, which is the host program for Clinton's presidential fellowship, reflects some of the same policy initiatives as the Clinton Foundation, the nonprofit operated by the Clinton family. The Clinton Foundation engages in philanthropic efforts and hosts events, including a summit with Clinton and her daughter Chelsea on the maternal health crisis and reproductive rights. The Clinton Foundation's other programs are fighting the climate crisis and educational and cultural programs on health equity and vaccinations and diversity and inclusion. These initiatives align with the efforts of Columbia World Projects, which lists climate, COVID-19, and maternal health as some of the social impact areas benefiting from its projects and research. Back to you, Emily. Thanks, Sarah. In our top story this week, university job applicants must state their contributions to diversity, equity, and inclusion. The University of California, Berkeley is hiring for an administrative position and has stated that candidates must have demonstrated experience with diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and social justice. An overview of UC Berkeley says that the university is looking for equity-minded applicants. The job application reads, when you join the team at Berkeley, you can expect to be part of an inclusive, innovative, and equity-focused community that approaches higher education as a matter of social justice. UC Berkeley's Office for Faculty Welfare, which oversees and promotes equitable hiring practices, provides a rubric for hiring. The rubric is a template for search committees to use for assessing candidate contributions and includes a section on diversity, equity, and inclusion. The rubric acts as a scoring sheet and candidates who do not show great contribution to diversity will receive low scores in this area, 
most likely costing them the job. Now it's time for the woke tweet of the week. This week's tweet comes from Colin Rugg who wrote, Virginia Tech soccer player Kirsten Henning, who got benched for refusing to kneel, receives $100,000 from settlement. Rugg called Henning a patriot, applauding her for standing up for her beliefs. In September 2020, Henning refused to kneel during a social justice demonstration in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. After Henning refused to kneel before the game, she claimed her coach verbally attacked her during halftime and benched her. Henning filed a federal lawsuit on First Amendment grounds against her coach in 2021. Henning is now receiving the $100,000 settlement after agreeing to dismiss the federal lawsuit. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube, and you can also follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. I'm Emily Sturge. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.